Hi everybody, this is Lady Lena here with you and uh, I'm here to um, share some of my thoughts. Um, um, I want to encourage some of folks that are feeling like they're in a place that they shouldn't be in. They feel like they've been faithful. They feel like they have um, been doing everything that they don't want to do, but somehow they're still pressing forward. Um, and so, I want to share a story with you um, regarding Jacob. Everybody know the story about Jacob and his deception and how he stole his brother Esau's birthright. Um, some may have heard about his infamous son, the dreamer, Joseph, and how his brothers stole um, Joseph's coat and brought it to his father in shambles and rags, and saying that a wolf had attacked and killed Joseph. So that's the lie that they told. So when one has a dream, you better believe that um, people are going to be jealous of you. They're going to talk against you. They're going to lie on you. They're going to try to block you. They'll join ranks and, 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 and just to come against you because they want to make sure that you don't get what you believe it to get. And they will do, they'll do anything. I mean, so I'm, I'm going to talk about these two deceivers, Laban and Jacob, and how those two have happened to live together for about 20 years um, with this toxic environment. I mean, but it, it, it was dysfunctional and somehow Jacob stayed in that relationship um, because he believed, you know, that he was on the right course. So I'm going to read, um, starting from Gen Genesis 30, 25 to 43, um, and it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my wife and children for whom I have served thee and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto thee, I pray thee, if I found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you. And so this has taken place after the deception um, where Jacob fell in love with Rachel and worked for seven years for her and only to wake up the next morning after the wedding with her sister Leah. And so Jacob had to work another seven years, you know, for Rachel. So he spent 14 years to get that one promise, that one dream. I mean, he was he was in a place where he didn't want to be in. And through, you know, the course of the time, you know, Jacob was dedicated and he was committed to being a, a son-in-law and to try to be a part of the family. And even in the course of trying to be a part of the family, you're going to find out later that the family didn't want to accept him. They was jealous of him, you know, and, but he was trying to be a part of that family. He was trying to be faithful and he was trying to work out some of his, you know, nuts, nuts and bolts to be a productive person. Now he tried to be righteous. And so it came to a point where he said, listen, after these, you know, I guess 14 years, he says, look, I want to go home. I want to go to my own place. So give me what's mine. And 
And he, and he said, because you know how I serve you and how your cattle was blessed because of me. So in verse 30, it says, for it was little which thou hast before I came. And now increase, now that you have increased into a multitude. And the Lord have blessed you since my coming. And now, when should I provide for my own house? So it's going to come a time in your life where you know you have walked to walk, you have talked to talk, you have been faithful, but you have nothing to show for it. You paid your tithes, you helped the homeless, you went the extra mile, you went without so others may have, you put other needs before your own, and now you still stand in lack. I mean, so you're tired of being in lack, you want what belongs to you. So I'm gonna say, the title of my vignette is going to be When You Birth a Dream. It's just to have your own place. It's to have your own place. And in 31, Laban said to Jacob, What should I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shouldn't give me anything if thy will do this one thing for me I will again feed and keep thy flock isn't it funny how people will look at you like you had owed them something um, knowing that you had worked faithfully and it was because of you that they've been blessed it's because of you that they've been successful but you're not the one to try to throw that in their face you're just being who you are to uh, according to what God has you know taught you to be so you're not one to throw that in no one's face you just you continue to plow forward you know be at work but Laban said what should I give you you know you know so be careful that people you know when you become successful people like to say because I gave you this you know, um, this is why we're who you are. Just like Jacob just said, you know, to Laban, you know, but it's the truth. I mean, the truth is the truth. But Jacob saying, listen, you're not going to have that over me. Okay. So look, you're not going to give me anything. I'm going to work for what I might do. Okay. So this is the plan. He says, okay, out of all your speckled, spotted, streaked and striped cattle, they will be mines and you'll keep the rest. Okay, so that would be that will be that will be that that will be the that will be the agreement. And anything that's not speckled, spotted, streak, or striped, it's going to be yours. So Jet so Laban said, Okay, yes, I'll agree to that. So what he did was he went to the cattle, he went to his flock and removed all those speckled, spotted, streak, and cattle before Jacob can get anything. You know, he's, he removed them and told his son to go three days journey so, so, so that Jacob couldn't get his hands on it. So from the start, you know, Laban is trying to overthink and try to be manipulate, manip manipulative to try to outthink you know, Jacob, in, in, from the start, uh, you're going to be in the negative because guess what? You're not going to have anything to start with, okay? So every, all the sheep now, and all the cattle, all the lamb, he, the females and the males, so they all are solid color. So you ain't got nothing. And I'm going to make sure, Laban, you're going to have nothing. Okay, so yes. You're gonna so the, so the enemy will send send his device to have these people to work against you. Oh yeah, I want you to go over there and make sure that don't happen. So this person don't get close to me. So this person don't get what they think they're gonna get. So guess what? You're not gonna have nothing. So Jacob goes to the cattle, knowing that he raised the flock. He know what's in the flock. You know he knows them by name. He can see who is who. Okay, so, but you know what? He didn't go out, get out of sorts. He says, okay, you know, I'm not going to try to go up this man and say, look, you cheated me. By right, this is your stuff. This is your flock. Okay, guess what? All right, this, we're going to start. This is where you want to start. This is, okay, we're going to start here. 
So what Jacob did was he had to try to be strategic, um, not to be deceitful, but he wanted something for him because he already know that Laban, Laban, Laban is not going to give him anything. So he had to try to devise a plan of his own. Not that as he's being manipulative, but he don't have anything. So he had to make up something and hope that God will bless it. So what he did, he was took these sticks and he made stripes out of the sticks. He cut up the, you know, he peeled the, the skin off the sticks so that the stick would look white and brown. Okay. All right. And he placed them, he placed them, he placed them at the watering trough where he would feed the sheep, the lamb. And so anytime that the lamb and sheep would feed, they would mate. Okay. So it came to pass, you know, as these sheep would look while they're being watered, they look at this stripe. Eventually they had bore, they conceived um, spotted, streaked, and speckled lambs and goats and so of course those was jacob's there's no way that laban said that okay you know you know this belonged to me so so this went on for i don't know i don't know about 20 years and through the course of the time you know as laban was you know continue to be deceptive you know he tricked Joseph, I mean, Jacob, uh, 10 times. And it, it came a time where he got fed up. Jacob got fed up and he says, look, I'm tired of this. I mean, Lord, I can't, I can't do this no more. This person is being honorary. This person is not going to change. I've served. I try to be a part of this fellow, this family. I try to be a part. I did what you had asked me to do and I did it in good faith I did it because I didn't want to do it I did it because I was I was led to do it and I, I, I wanted to be a part of this so it came to part where it came to a time where Jacob couldn't even look at Laban at the same way meaning that he had no respect for him he didn't want to lose respect for him, but it was coming to that part where he was probably might have would have stopped acting out of character. So God was saying, okay, this is the end. This is it. This is the end. And I'm going to read um, in verse 31. I mean, chapter 31, where after you know i guess six or seven years jacob you know kept the flock that jacob i mean laban laban's son started talking against jacob saying oh look you have stole all my father's uh property and now look you're, you're rich because of them and all this glory you have is because of them but no from the very start there was agreement that look your father left me with nothing and each time that I wanted to have something, he took that away. But I still stayed there. I still been, I still stayed there. I still work. And you still want to try to leave me with nothing. So God said, okay. This is what he says. In, in Genesis 31, he says, And he heard the words of Levin's son saying, Jacob have taken away all that was our father's. And of that which our fathers, he had gotten all the glory. And Jacob beheld his contents of labor. And behold, it was not towards him as the same. Like, to me, I take that as love. I can't even look at this man, you know, because he's just evil. I mean, I'm trying to come out of this thing. I'm trying to be right. And the Lord says, and the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And that was what Jacob wanted 20 years ago, 14 years ago. Okay, you know, I told it started. I started off in um, Genesis 30, 25, and he says, It came to pass when Rachel was born, when Rachel had born Joseph, that was the dream. 
that was Jacob Jean. He bore the dreamer. And he said to Laban, send me, he asked him, send me away so I can go to my own place, to my own country. And the Lord said, it's now, Jacob, it's time for you to have your own place, to be in your own place. It is time for you to sit where I tell you to sit. It's time for you to rule. It's time for you to be majestic. It's time for you to be a leader. It's time for you to be a deliverer. It's time for you to work in your purpose. It's time for you to walk out your destiny. It's time for you to be a healer. It's time for you to be an intercessor. It's time for you, for me, to work for you for your purpose. It's time for you to receive what I have for you. In spite of what the enemy did. Yes, I know. I saw that. And it goes to says right this. And it says like this. And he says, and it came to pass at the time that the cattle had seized. And then God, no, I'm sorry. And God had, wait a minute. And no, it says in verse 11 of 31, 11 and the angel of God spake unto me into a dream and saying and I said no and the angel of God spake unto me into a dream saying Jacob and I said here I am and he said lift up now thy eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight speckled and grizzled for I have seen all that Laban done unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, that you have anointed the pillars. So God's saying that, Jacob, I seen you struggling, having nothing for 20 years. You have nothing to show for it, but you stayed faithful. You stayed diligent. And all the while, I saw that. I saw how you was being deceived. I saw how the family came against you. I saw how you try to maintain who you were. And you have come through. So now it's time for you to receive. So now it's time for you to receive. So when the point I'm trying to make is that you might feel that you're in a bad place and you have been there for quite a while. I just don't want you to think that you're doing this in vain. You're doing this because you know you are being led. And if you stay diligent, you stay faithful, God is going to come through for, through for you because he see it all along. I just don't want you to try to get derailed and thinking that you're doing something that you're not supposed to. And yes, you're going to get everybody that's come against you saying you're stuck. Okay, you're in a toxic environment. They don't understand. They don't understand that you are being led. They don't even understand that God see it. This is scripture to show you that, that even Jacob stayed in a place where he didn't want to be in. He wanted to leave 20 years ago, but he stayed there, convicted. And he worked. And it's it and it's and, and he told one of his um he told his wife, he says. I served your father with everything that I had, with all my power. I served with my all of my heart, my mind, and my soul. Everything I had. And God blessed him because of how he walked out his walk of faith. So just be encouraged. Don't change. Don't let nobody change you. Okay? Please don't. Please don't, because your reward is coming. Your reward is becoming, and God sees you. I just, I just want to, I just want to share that with you, because everybody think because if you worked such, um, twenty years or thirty years or even ten years or five years, you still don't have nothing to show for it, and you, you know, you, you, you might even been home. You just have nothing. Just keep at it. God has your blessing. God will give you your dream. It's coming. Stay, stay there, beloved. Stay there. Don't listen to nobody. I just don't, and I, and I just didn't want to put this in a formal 
you know, I didn't want to present it so formal. I just wanted to talk about it because, you know, it, it just was pressing with me. It's just pressing with me. And I too have served and has been serving in a place where um, I've been just totally um, just being, I don't know, disrespected. I mean, hurt, harmed, abused, you know, hated, you know, and um, just stay there. Stay there until the Lord moves for you. He got your own place for you. God bless. I love you.